Hello, I'm here today with Ryan McPherson, Chief Sustainability Officer at the University at Buffalo. Ryan is responsible for leading the university's climate action plan called UB's 10 in 10. This plan commits to carbon neutrality by 2030. And one way that the university has determined they'll meet this goal is by electrifying the commute for students, faculty, and staff, roughly 25,000 commuters daily. Secondly, they're working to electrify their fleet of nearly 500 vehicles on campus. The university has already met their goal of providing 100% of electricity from clean energy sources, ensuring that every electric vehicle charged on campus is fueled by the cleanest energy source possible. The university's goal to electrify is critical to making a big dent in their carbon footprint, and I'm excited to have Brian here today to participate in our customer lightning round. Uh, I want to focus the lightning round um, in three specific areas, Ryan, sustainability, EV policy, and advice that you have for other sustainability leaders. So let's start with the first question. How does EV charging fit into the University at Buffalo sustainability program and goals and just overall climate change efforts? Yeah, it's, it's pivotal to our climate change strategy. So about a third of our emissions right now are coming from single occupancy vehicles. And uh, so reducing that completely by electrifying the vehicle is our main strategy in that area. Of our 10 different initiatives that make up our climate work, two of them electrifying the, the vehicle and um, uh, res uh, commuting responsibly are centered on really the idea of electric vehicle charging. The University at Buffalo recently went from three ports to over uh, 30 charging ports. That's like an 11 fold increase during the pandemic. And how are you kind of managing this program through rapid growth and as students, faculty and staff come back to campus this fall? Yeah, so, you know, we, we really hooked the new, uh, the new project to the development of a new EV uh, charging policy. And so getting that through our system and, and really having a read on the analytics of who's charging and how much and how we can deploy assets that way. And it's also going to tell us, you know, how we need to or if we need to expand and, and where might we do that. And so the idea of kind of like smart charging, if you will, um, is really embedded in the overarching strategy of, of how we grow over time. What advice do you have for other sustainability leaders like yourself who may be getting started with EV charging or they're perhaps looking to expand? I know you've been kind of in both phases, so it'd be great if you can share some tips and tricks. Sure. I, I think there are a, a lot of my colleagues out there who are doing um, really great work in this and probably a lot better than we are. But, um, it, you know, I, I guess my first thing is just um, move now. Uh, this is a uh, I, I think, you know, um, you don't want to wait on on charging because what we see coming out of auto manufacturing and as a regulation as well, uh, this is an area that is not a, a fad. This is moving forward very fast. And so I, I think delay is our enemy um, in, in this space right now. I think there's a lot of different grants out there and things. We were able to pencil these out pretty much with a very limited amount of university funds uh, and so leverage those as well. And just thinking about the different audiences, thinking from those perspectives, right? Um, so thinking from a faculty perspective, a student perspective, and, um, and a staffing perspective. And finally, um, you know, if someone can, can show me how we can get our mobility reductions down that doesn't involve EV charging, I'm all ears, uh, but I think it is probably uh, the best, uh, most realistic strategy uh, to, to get the biggest reduction with the uh, smallest amount of, of infrastructure and funds. Um, are you an EV driver? I am. That's great. We like to hear that. And what type of EV do you drive? So I'm going to answer this in a little bit of an extended way. I, I started with um, a, a Nissan Leaf. I went to a Chevy Bolt after that for, I think, each for about four or five years. Um, and then uh, uh, we uh, got a Tesla um, a Model 3 and um, about a year ago, got a Tesla Model Y that my wife drives. Um, so uh, we're a completely electric uh, vehicle family. We'll never go back. Um, they are, uh, once you experience uh, driving an electric, no matter what model it is, it's just so much more enjoyable. Um, and I, I think, you know, there, there's so many aspects of it um, from 
you know, some people kind of refer to it as you're half driving a computer and half driving a car. Um, so it's not just the fact that it's electrified, but it's just a lot smarter um, and a lot more enjoyable to, to drive. And the seats are much warmer uh, because of that electric heat, at least I found up here in Buffalo. So in the middle of the winter, that's a big plus. I was going to say your, your harsh winters, um, I'm sure that comes in handy. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for participating in this uh, customer lightning round of questions. Oh, it's my pleasure, Christine.